This presentation is part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given on this slide. Before looking at the C++ programming language itself, first we need to consider how we actually build a C++ program. In other words, if we have several C++ source code files, how do we translate this into an actual executable program that can be run by the operating system that we're using? So this is what we're going to be focusing on in, on the next several slides, is the actual process of building software and what's involved in doing this. Before discussing the software build process in the context of the C++ programming language, let us first look at an example of the source code for a very simple program written in C++. On this slide we have the source code for the classic Hello World program, so these seven lines of code here. And by the way, these numbers in the left margin are not actually part of the source code listing, they're just right there for convenience. Uh, when this program is executed, it simply prints the message Hello World and then terminates. And depending on the operating system and how the program is run, the message that is printed might appear on the user's console or terminal or be written to a file. So if we look at the program in a little bit more detail, the very first line we have what's called a preprocessor direct directive, uh, an include directive. And what this is saying is there's some other file called iostream, and essentially we want to insert the entire contents of that file in place of this, the first line of code. It just replaces or inserts you know, the, line, the lines of code from another file into this particular file we're looking at. Then we have the function main, which is the entry point for all C++ programs. Every C++ program must have a function called main, and this is where the program starts executing from. This particular function, it takes some parameters which are ignored in this particular program. The next line of code simply prints out the message hello, comma, space, world, exclamation mark, followed by a new line character to the standard output stream, which is represented by this variable cout. And the standard output stream, depending on the operating system and how the program is run, it might correspond to the user's terminal or console, or it might correspond to a file or some other device. And then lastly, we, we return, which is basically passing some kind of value back to the operating system indicating whether the program was successful or not. And perhaps I should also mention this less than, less than sign is essentially an output operator. So we're outputting this string here to this particular output stream here. So this is just a very simple example of a C++ program. On the previous slide, we saw an example of the source code for a program written in C++. Since C++ source code consists of human-readable text and not actual machine instructions, a computer cannot directly execute source code. Therefore, in order to run a program, we must first translate the source code into an executable program, which consists of machine instructions and their associated data, as well as other auxiliary information. This translation process is performed in two stages, the first being compilation or compiling, and the second being linking. The process of compiling and linking is illustrated by the figure on the slide. So we start out with one or more C++ source code files, these files over here. If we have a very simple program, there might just be one source code file for the whole program. But in practice, usually we'll have multiple source code files. And if the program is very complex, there could be hundreds or thousands of source code files. There's many different naming conventions that are used for naming the source code files, but one common convention is to use the file name extension CPP for a regular C++ source code file, and to use the extension HPP for a header file. And a header file is simply a C++ source code file that is included in another source code file by using a preprocessor include directive. So once we have our source code files, for each of the source code files, we compile them. And what this does, the compilation process takes our source code file and produces from it a corresponding object file. And the object file contains what's called object code. And what object code is, it's simply a collection of machine instructions, the data that goes with those instructions, as well as other information that's used for linking and debugging. And typically on Unix-based systems, the file name extension O is used for an object file. Then the final process uh, that's involved in compiling and linking the program is to link. So the linking process, what this does is it takes several object files, we have one or more object files, and it combines them together 
and possibly take some object code from what are called libraries as well. Libraries are just collections of object code and it combines them all together to produce the final executable program which we can then run on whatever operating system that we're using. These days C++ compilers are quite commonplace so most platforms have at least one C++ compiler available and often more than one. Here we're going to consider the C++ compiler from the GNU compiler collection which is perhaps better known by the acronym GCC. The GCC software is extremely popular. It supports many platforms, in other words, many different operating systems and processor architectures. It produces very high quality code, and best of all, it's free and open source. With the GCC C++ compiler, compiling and linking are both performed by the same command, namely the G++ command. And whether the G++ command performs compiling or linking depends on how it's invoked. When the G++ command is invoked, the command line has the general form shown here, so we specify the command G++, followed by one or more options, followed by one or more input files. So for example, if we want to use the G++ command to compile some code, for example, suppose we want to compile the source code in the file file.cpp, we could use the command line G++ minus C, where the minus C option says to compile as opposed to link, and the file that we want to compile is the file file.cpp. Notice that we don't actually explicitly specify an output file here, and if we don't specify an output file, what will happen is the compiler will strip off the .cpp suffix and replace it by a .o suffix. So the output file that's containing the object file produced by compiling will be stored in the file file.o. If you want to instead use the G++ command to link, for example, suppose we have the files, object files, file underscore 1.0, file underscore 2.0, and so on, and we want to link them all together to produce an executable file called executable, the command line that we would use for this is we would say G++ minus O to specify what the output file is going to be, and this minus O option takes a parameter, which is this parameter here, executable, so we're saying that the output file should be called executable, and then we list the object files that we want to link subsequently. So it's going to link file 1.0, file 2.0, and so on. And the G++ command has many different options you can specify, literally hundreds. I have summarized the most important options, the most basic options here. The first option we already saw above, the, the minus C option specifies that you only want to compile as opposed to linking. The minus O option is used to specify the output file. The minus G option is used to specify that debugging information should be included in the object files or executable files that are produced by compiling and linking. This is extra metadata that's used by, for example, a symbolic debugger. The minus capital O option is used to specify the optimization level. If we specify for N here the digit zero, this corresponds to no optimization or almost no optimization. There is some basic optimization that's performed, but most is disabled. And this can also take on the values 1, 2, 3, this digit n. 3 corresponds to full optimization. Uh, the next option is the minus std option, and this is used to specify which version of the standard the code should be compiled with. So there's various different uh, versions of the C++ standard. The first was the C++ 98 standard, the first version of the ISO standard specifying the C++ language. There's also a C++ 11 and C++ 14 option that can be specified here. C++14 is the most recent version of the standard as of the time of this presentation. The uh, pthread option is used to specify that concurrency support via the POSIX threads library should be used. The minus i option is used to specify additional directories in which to search for include files or header files as they're sometimes called. The C++ compiler has built into it a list of directories where it will normally look for include files. In other words, files that you specify with the number sign include directive. Sometimes, however, you'll have include files that are in directories that the compiler doesn't normally look for include files, in which case you'll have to specify explicitly that the compiler should look in those directories by using the minus i option and then immediately followed by the name of the directory that the, the compiler should look for additional header files. And you can specify multiple minus capital I options if there's multiple directories you want to search. The minus capital L option is used to specify additional directories in which to search for libraries. So when you're linking a program, you may specify a number of libraries that you want to link with. And 
sometimes there will be, and again, just like with include files, there's also a list of directories in which the, the compiler, the linker part of the compiler, will normally look for libraries. But sometimes you'll have libraries that are installed in, in places where the compiler or linker would not normally look for them. And the minus capital L option gives you a way to add additional directories to the list of directories where libraries will normally be looked for. The next option, the minus lowercase l option, is used to specify libraries to link with. So in the case of the standard C++ library or C library, when you're using these libraries, they'll automatically be linked with when you perform a linking operation. However, any other library that you might want to link with, you have to explicitly identify the library with a minus lowercase l option. And the, the lib here represents the name of the library that you want to link with. The next option is the minus capital W A L L option. The minus capital W stands for warning, and then A L L just means all. And essentially what this option does is enable all warning messages. And I would really strongly encourage you to always enable warning messages when you're compiling your code, uh, because often the compiler can point out very serious mistakes that can be easily fixed if you have a warning message, but otherwise might get missed without the warning messages. And then lastly, if you want more information on GCC, you can find this information from the website for the GCC software, which is listed here. Suppose that we have the source code for the Hello World program, which was shown on an earlier slide, stored in a single file called hello.cpp. And suppose that we want to build this program, in other words, compile and link it. There's numerous ways in which this can be done, but most typically this would be done as follows. Uh, for each source code file, we would invoke the G++ command to compile the file. And then after that, we would invoke the G++ command to link all the resulting object files together to produce our final executable program file. So in this particular case, we have a single source code file called hello.cpp. And we would compile it using a command which looks something like what's shown here. So we're using the G++ command. We specify the minus C option to say compile as opposed to link. And the file we want to compile is hello.cpp. And because we don't specify an output file, what the compiler will do is it will strip off the .cpp suffix and replace it by a .o suffix. So the output file will be stored in hello.o. Then we perform a link operation to link all of the object files. In this case, there's only one, hello.o, to produce an executable program called hello. So to do this, we invoke the G++ command. We specify for the output file, hello. Remember, the minus O option specifies the output, and it takes a single parameter. So the output file is hello. And the object files we want to link together are the ones that are listed here. There's only a single object file, hello.o. Now, the process of actually building a program is somewhat tedious. It, it, you can imagine if there were 100 source code files or 1,000 source code files, it gets rather tedious having to invoke the compiler in this way. So in practice, we would automate this process using other tools. And one such tool is something called the make utility, which I'm going to talk about in some more detail on the subsequent slides.